And as much as I'm always sad to leave, I am so lucky and grateful that I'll be back in May. Disney World and most theme parks in Florida closing Sunday evening. I hope everyone's okay. Yeah. I hope everyone's hanging in there. Stay safe, stay healthy, yes. look after each other. Every one of these live streams, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we're that little bit closer to both yes. some kind of normality and going to Disney again. Going forward, fingers crossed, we will be able to go back to Disney World at some point. Travel is not possible at the moment from the UK to the US. So this trip has been moved about eight times now from May 2020. It is now December 2020 and it just keeps getting sort of pushed back and pushed back. I figured since we can't go to Disney, let's talk Disney. It seems, I say it seems because uh, I'm not going to be certain about any of this until I am actually in the air, um, but it seems that we are going back to Disney World. Everyone and welcome to a Disney in detail travel day not just any travel day it is a travel day to Orlando the first one in a very long time it's been a minute we have obviously been locked out of traveling to the US for quite some time due to COVID as you will all know and today we are back at Heathrow. I am here at the Hilton Garden Inn the night before my flight I fly tomorrow morning and I honestly can't believe it it's surreal it really genuinely is surreal i just can't yeah i have just waited for this moment for so long i know so many of you guys are also waiting or still waiting you've got trips moved to next year or the year after you're very very keen to know everything about the new travel experience and that's going to be a big part of these vlogs i really want to explain all of that what's different what you have to do um, everything so that you are prepared for your trip. The reason I came up earlier today was to get my COVID test done and I'm going to talk about that in a second. I did kind of film everything I was doing but I didn't talk through it then. I thought what would be best is to go through the whole process and the whole experience, vlog it, so I did film it um, and then talk to you when I'm back here at the room having done it and I can insert the footage of everything and talk you through. So I got here this morning via a National Express coach. That was actually the easiest way for me to get here because normally I travel from Gatwick. I'm not used to traveling from Heathrow um, and that was just the much easier option for me. So I did that. Arrived at Terminal 2 because that is where I had booked my COVID test. And I guess that's the first thing to mention. One of the big things is that in order to travel to the US, you have to provide a negative test result. And when the news first came out that the borders were opening, the information was kind of a little bit sketchy about exactly what we had to do, what kind of test, who could do the test and all that sort of stuff, like which company to use and everything. And I was trying to navigate that really with very little information. So the option that I did choose is probably actually not what I would recommend now that I've looked into it a little bit more. So I booked a PCR test here at Heathrow for the day before. So obviously I'm flying tomorrow, I got it done today. You don't have to have a PCR test, it can be a lateral flow test, but it does have to be supervised via video call. That is the big difference to a lot of other countries. The US have that requirement. If you are doing a lateral flow, it has to be supervised. And 
at first I was like, oh, like, I don't know, should I do that? Should I just get it done by somebody? And I ended up thinking that it was best to get the PCR, but in hindsight, I probably would have just done the lateral flow test. Um, you can get it done through a company. I mean, there's several different ones, but Prenetics, I think they're called. That's who we used for Disney Cruise Line. When we did the UK staycation cruise, everybody had to get a COVID test done there. And also you had to prove your vaccination and stuff. And that was the company that we used then. And they are doing these supervised lateral flow tests for you to go to the US. So you can do that at home, but like I say, you do have to do it via a video call. So in hindsight, I would have done that, I think. But I decided to do it this way and get the test done today. I did pay for a three hour turnaround with the results. So it was expensive. It was by no means a cheap option. In fact, it was probably the most expensive option. Um, at the time, it just felt like that was the right option for me and it was fine I got here and wandered around not having a clue where I was going I was I knew I was at terminal 2 but I didn't know exactly where and the information I had been emailed said arrivals so off I went to arrivals and I was walking around and it turned out that it wasn't in arrivals it was in departures so then it was back into the lift to go to um, level 5 I think it was for departures and still if you're expecting to turn up and see really obvious signs about where the COVID testing center is, there are none. I still wandered around not really knowing where it was. It turns out that it was relatively easy to find if I had just wandered around everywhere, but I did ask somebody and there's a big coster down at the end. And if you turn to the right hand side, you can see the testing center there. And I actually turned up an hour early for my test and that was absolutely fine. They took me in, um, it took seconds to do the test. It was really, really easy. And then you get the results within three hours in theory. Uh, so I'll come back to that in a second. So then I kind of wandered around a bit more, a bit like a lost sheep, because as I said, I'm not used to traveling from Heathrow. I'm used to traveling from Gatwick. So I was looking for the hotel, this Hilton that I'm in. I did have to ask several people and they directed me to the Hilton Garden Inn, which ended up being kind of across the car park. And I had to go all the way through there. And then it turned out that that wasn't the right Hilton Garden Inn because there are two. There are two here at Heathrow that are called, both called Hilton Garden Inn, which is very helpful. So I then had to come all the way back um, down to the very bottom floor and get a bus. I was told to get bus stop number nine to head across on the kind of airport hopper bus thing. And it turns out it only goes like once an hour. I saw a taxi rank and just went for the taxi. I thought, I'm, I'm doing this, I need to get to my hotel. Um, and that was actually a much easier option. And especially if there's more than one of you, um, then obviously a taxi probably would actually be a cheaper option. For me, it was a little more expensive because I'm just one person. So the bus probably would have cost a little bit less, but it was just way easier getting a taxi. So if you have booked the Hilton Garden Inn, just have a look at where you're booking because there's one that's actually attached to Terminal 2, which is the original one I went to. And there's this one, which is on Perimeter Road. So if you're in the one on Perimeter Road, it is this one. It's not the one in the terminal, despite the fact they're called the same thing. And getting the taxi, you can just pay contactless with your card. That was very, very easy. So then I came back here to await my test results and it did take longer than the three hours, unfortunately. I did start getting quite anxious. I was thinking, my gosh, my flight is tomorrow. Like this feels very, very last minute. Hence why I probably if I was doing it again, I would do the lateral flow over video call so that it was done a bit earlier. But I just sort of didn't, I didn't know what the best thing was to do. This felt like the right option. So I did have to chase it up, but it just took a phone call. I spoke to a very, very nice lady who answered almost straight away. And within probably 15 minutes of that phone call, I then had the fit to fly certificate through on my phone. And if you do the at home lateral flow test option where it's supervised by a video call, you will still get the same result, which is basically this fit to fly certificate that says you have had a negative test result. So you need that. You also need to fill in a form, which you can see on the airline's website, whoever you're flying with called a a testation form, I think, something like that. You have to fill that in. And you also have to have the proof of your COVID vaccination. So if you're in the UK, that would be the NHS app. Um, and you just go on there and you can get the QR code and the, the details of your vaccines. So those are the things that you need. 
proving your vaccine, your negative test result, and fill in that form ahead of time. That's basically what's different. And I know lots of people are very worried about all these different things that you've got to do, but other than waiting longer than I expected for the test result, which did stress me out, I can't lie, <laughs> I did find that quite uh, anxiety inducing. Um, but apart from that, it actually was completely fine. You know, getting the test done was easy and all the rest of it. So I can't really advise on who exactly you should use for your COVID test or or, you know so I just want to say that as a disclaimer anything I say is just my experience please don't anybody take anything I say as definitely the right thing to do it's just my advice but I can't be held responsible for anybody's travel plans or covid tests or anything like that so always do your own research but I will link in the description to the one that I used and also to the Prenetics one um, but like I said, that is not me saying use those. That is just for your information. But please always do your own research as well when you're planning your trip. But now we have got to this point, the main thing that is very exciting is that I am now ready to go. I've got my negative test result, got my proof of vaccination, filled in the form. I went to check in online with Virgin Atlantic, but it says I have to go to the desk. I don't know if that's because you then have to show obviously your negative test result and stuff. So maybe that's why I couldn't check in online. I don't know, but that's fine. I've got a taxi booked for tomorrow morning at 7.45. My flight has actually just been pushed back an hour to 12.20 instead of 11.20 in the morning. Uh, but that just gives me a bit of extra time to get over there, get some breakfast. You know, I love an airport browse. I like to have plenty of time. Um, I don't want to rush or anything. So um, yes, that's absolutely fine by me. To get up and going early, I'm going to be very excited. I will probably be awake at some crazy hour of the morning because I'm just going to be so incredibly excited. <laughs> I just honestly, honestly can't wait for this. It's been such a long time coming. I know that you guys are so excited as well for all the updates, the live streams, the photos on Instagram, the vlogs. I'm gonna be sharing so much of this trip. It is a solo trip, so I'm here on my own. Um, so for me, I actually love sharing everything with you guys. It almost feels like I'm away with somebody, even though I'm not, because I know you guys are following along and just very, very excited for all of this. And who knows what kind of emotional wreck I'm gonna be when I get there tomorrow. I don't even want to think about it. Probably taking off, landing, definitely arriving at the airport, getting on the Magical Express, getting to my hotel, you name it, I will be getting emotional about it. And especially then when I get to the parks on Saturday morning, going through the gates at Magic Kingdom, I mean, yeah, it's gonna be amazing, very, very exciting. I'm staying at Saratoga Springs for the first few nights of the trip, so that's where we're gonna be. I also am gonna be staying at the Boardwalk in a one bedroom DVC villa for a few nights, which I cannot wait for. And then I have a couple of nights at Old Key West as well. So lots of different hotels for you guys to see. I'll be doing room tours of everything. And I'll also show you a little tour of this room just in case you're thinking about booking this hotel. I think I'm going to order something from Uber Eats for my dinner. There isn't really anything around here. Um, and I don't even know if this hotel has a restaurant, I'm not sure. But I've got a video to edit and sort out before tomorrow. So I'm just gonna order myself something and head downstairs to pick it up because you can just get Uber Eats delivered to your hotel. If you've never used it before, I will link it below. I do have a code for you to get some money off your first order with them. It is a referral code, so full disclosure, I think I get something as well, some credit or whatever. Um, but Uber Eats, I just find it great when I'm out in Orlando and over here. So I'm gonna do that now and just get this video finished. So this is the room at the Hilton Garden Inn and this, as I said, is the one on Perimeter Road, not the one at the airport terminal. So let's just check out the bathroom. Pretty standard, you do have toiletries and stuff in here. Shampoo and body wash and all that type of thing. Then it's a shower over the bath and a toilet behind the door. Then there is a wardrobe here with an iron and a safe and all the usual type of thing, extra towels and stuff. And a little thing there to put your luggage. Then there's a TV and tea and coffee making stuff. And they do have these cups as well as regular ones so that if you're making yourself a coffee in the morning, you could take that with you. So that's actually really useful because they don't normally have those. Then there's just a chair there so you could sit here to do some work, which I will probably do later. And there is a little table over here, but weirdly no chair. So I guess that's just to kind of put stuff on. And we are overlooking, I think just a car park. Oh no, there's a plane, there is a plane. 
And then over here, they've got some nice airport themed artwork. And this room has two beds. Originally, it was going to be me and Kate on this trip. So I booked this room, but you can just book a room with one bed. And it's a full length mirror and everything as well. So pretty nice, you know, not super exciting. Just a very standard airport hotel type room. Later. So here I am living the dream night before a Disney trip, editing the packing video, which I still haven't quite finished while eating a Burger King. Perfect, what more could you want? So it's way later on now. I'm just making myself a tea before bed. I did obviously bring my biscuit brew. If anyone hasn't tried this tea, it is so good. Seriously, just try it. I can't go anywhere without it now. I had to bring a whole box for my trip, so I'm just gonna make that. And then I'm gonna get some sleep for a very early start in the morning and a very exciting travel day. So I will see you guys in the morning. The next morning. Good morning, it is travel day to Florida. I can't believe it. I'm running out the door um, because I've got a taxi in five minutes downstairs. I've already got my mask on. I've got this mini t-shirt from Boohoo, which kind of matches with it, love it and I'm buzzing to get over there. I need to go and check in because it wouldn't let me check in online. So when we get over there, I'll find out why and explain that to you guys so that you know for your trips. But let's get downstairs and get this cab. Okay, we are here at Terminal 3. It's raining, so I need to get in here ASAP. Oh, let's not get run over. And it looks absolutely packed in here. So let's see what we're dealing with. Okay, so you guys are gonna wanna brace yourselves for this one because it does look kinda busy in here. That doesn't mean it's gonna take ages. We will see what happens. <laughs> and this is a very fancy looking Virgin Atlantic terminal check-in area. Definitely fancier than they have at Gatwick, or used to anyway. So it looks like the first thing we're gonna get to is the document checks, and then you obviously go forward to actually check in. And just as a reminder, obviously at this point you should have your passport, and on your phone you should have your negative test result, which is your fit to fly certificate. You should also have your ESTA, hopefully. I always keep a copy of that on my phone. And also your vaccine passport thing, which will be on the NHS app. And one thing that I suppose is blindingly obvious, but I'm gonna say it anyway, is make sure your phone is charged. There would be nothing worse than if all these documents are on your phone and it's not charged. And everything these days is with a QR code. So yeah, definitely, definitely make sure you've got battery on your phone. Moments later. So quick update, I will try and let you know everything as it's happening. I just went through the document check and they wanted to see my passport. They wanted to see the negative test result certificate. And they also wanted to see my vaccine passport thing. So I showed all of those and now we're in the main line to check in. And all of that was fine on my phone they didn't need a paper copy. Oh, and the other thing they did ask to see was my ticket, like I guess my booking, just to make sure that I am booked onto this flight. And I just showed them that in the Virgin Atlantic app. More moments later. Okay, we are done with check-in. It was extremely easy, it was not stressful, and in a minute I'm going to grab a coffee and I'll give you a debrief on the whole process. But the main thing is, don't worry about it, because it's very, very easy. Okay, now we are straight upstairs to security. I won't be able to vlog this bit, so I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, we are through. That was actually really not bad at all. Like I said, I'm gonna go and find a coffee as a priority because I really need one. I haven't had one yet today. And then we will just go through everything that just happened for those of you who have got your trips coming up soon. And because Kate's not here, we're not gonna be looking at the expensive sunglasses today. And um, also I won't be looking at the makeup because you guys know Sephora is waiting for me on the other side of the pond. So definitely I will be going there. So we're gonna bypass all this and just uh, prioritize the coffee for sure. And this is what I was looking for. They've just opened a new ELNN location here at Heathrow. I love this place. They have several of them in London and they are beautiful. So we're gonna get our coffee from here. I just love how pink this place is. Okay, so we've got a nice little booth seat over here. Um, they did say that their kitchen is closed. I don't know if there's some kind of technical problem or something, but you can only have pastries and coffee, but that's fine. Cause all we really want at this point is some coffee. There's a QR code there on the table to get the menu. And then I will go and find some proper breakfast somewhere after this. And just in case anyone isn't familiar with this new concept of QR codes at tables and restaurants, you literally just switch on your camera and scan it and then it will come up with the link and then you can click that link and it will take you to the menu. So here is my coffee and yes, it is a Lucky Charm latte. This is my favorite thing to get here. It's just so awesome. I. Yeah, I had to get it, had to get this. It's not cheap and being at an airport, it's probably even worse than normal, I don't know. But anyway, in a second while I'm drinking this, I will just talk you through all of the check-in process and everything and then we will go and have a wander around. 
get something for the plane in terms of food because you know I don't eat aeroplane food so we'll get a sandwich or something and yeah just then we have to wait that's it so the lighting is not great in here but hopefully you can see me okay um, I just wanted to talk through this morning basically because I know that one of the biggest things for everybody who is waiting to go on their trip is a lot of people are stressed and worried about what it's going to be like is it going to be a massive hassle all of that kind of thing and it really really wasn't this is my 21st trip to Orlando and I have to say the process of getting here checking in and doing everything was no different to normal it really really wasn't there's just a couple of things that you have to show them obviously the vaccine passport and stuff and the test results but that's really it it didn't take any longer and um, security was fine the only part of it that was stressful if I'm totally honest was worrying about getting COVID before going and then obviously getting the test and getting the negative results that was the only thing that stressed me out because obviously COVID is still everywhere at the moment and in the lead up to the trip I was just so worried I was trying to stay away from people as much as possible um, but other than that and then just getting that test result last night as I explained I probably in hindsight would have done the video guided um, lateral flow test through Prenetics again I just have to say as a disclaimer my advice is only my experience and um, please do your own research I can't be held responsible for anybody's decisions to do with their testing and whatever you get done um, but I will link that in the description and um, I will also link the one that I used um, which was the express test PCR test but it's very expensive you pay a massive premium to get the three hour result and I didn't even get the result in three hours I had to chase it up and that did stress me out a little so I probably would go for the lateral flow test just make sure with everything that you're doing you're getting it done in enough time you're not leaving yourself with no time to get the results and then being in a panic and stuff because that's the only thing that's really going to cause you a problem so at the check-in desk like I said they did do a little pre-check of my documents and my vaccine pass they wanted to see the negative test result and everything so by the time I got to the check-in desk they had already seen all of that so the lady at the check-in desk who was lovely by the way at Virgin um, she just needed to ask the address that I'm going to be staying at so make sure you do have the address written down of your hotel or your villa and ideally they need the full address the other thing they asked for which I've never been asked for before was the card that I bought the flight on so my credit card or your debit card however you paid they actually physically wanted to see that card so that was a little bit unusual so make sure that you have that with you um, what else did they say I think those were the only things they asked obviously they need to see your passport you have to take your mask off just for them to verify who you are um, they did not weigh my hand luggage I know a lot of people ask about that um, they didn't check hand luggage or weigh it it was just my main suitcase which was 16 kilos that is probably the lightest suitcase I have ever taken with me so that's amazing lots of room to bring stuff back then going through security it was exactly the same as normal obviously you just have to take your mask off when you scan the barcode to go through those automatic gates you just have to take your mask down social distancing in queue areas is not really a thing so whenever you're waiting to check in and you're waiting at security there are people all around you because there's no social distancing but you do have to wear your mask and I have to say everybody was wearing them people weren't like taking them down or doing anything like that uh, so that was really good so yeah if you have any questions about the process I've tried to cover it as much as I can I think but there might be things that I've forgotten to say so please do ask those questions in the comments um, I've also put it up on Instagram stories so I'm sure some of you guys will have already asked your questions um, but if you haven't I'm happy to answer anything that you want to know about this whole process my flight has been delayed by an hour I think I mentioned that so it was supposed to be 11.20 it's now going to be 12.20 but I'm through in plenty of time it is currently 9.15 and I'm already through the security through check-in done everything I'm just in departures now so I've got plenty of time to just look around drink coffee have breakfast and relax so the main thing that I wanted to say is just please don't worry if you are stressed about your trip and you're stressed about everything, COVID, the process of checking in, all the documents you need to have. It was all completely fine. The only thing that was stressful was trying not to get COVID and to get that negative result. But honestly, apart from that, it's been absolutely fine. So for anyone who's worried, please don't. It's been an absolute breeze so far. So I just had a thought. Am I technically eating breakfast already because I have Lucky Charms floating in my coffee? That's breakfast breakfast right kind of kind of not I think I'm definitely gonna go and find something actual proper breakfast in a minute but this is really nice okay so we are all done in there it's really cute I would definitely recommend trying it out in there it's really 
really nice, very pink. If you love pink, definitely try that. And now I'm just gonna go and grab a sandwich for the plane. I think I saw a pret as I was walking through. And then I'll just show you around here because we've not flown from Heathrow before. So everything is a little bit different. I don't really know where everything is, but I'm figuring it out. Okay, that is a line that I don't wanna get in for pret. So let's go to Boots because they do stuff in there. You can see I'm already gearing up for Genie Plus because standing in line is not my thing. <laughs> And we're definitely going to cover all of that when we're in Orlando for sure because that's one of the biggest changes since we were last there. Okay, before we do anything, let's just check what it's saying. I think that boarding, it was saying, is beginning at 10.25, but I don't know if that allows for the delay. Uh, where are we? 12.20 Orlando. Gate will be shown at 11.20. Oh, okay, so we've got a while. I think I'm going to go and get some breakfast then. I think I'm just going to go here to the curator. Curator? Is that how you say that? Yes. Okay, I'm seated and um, the tables in here are very cosy. They're in fact so close together that I didn't even know if I could get through there. I'm pretty sure I couldn't. So I'm sat on this side <laughs> rather than on the comfortable side. Yeah, don't come in here to have a private conversation, that is for sure. So here we go. Obviously being British, before you leave at the airport, you have to have a full English because it's just the law. Question though, do chips belong on a full English? You tell me. I would normally have hash browns, but I'm not complaining because they do look nice. And I'm going to have this and then I'm going to have a little wander around some of the shops and make sure that I'm keeping an eye on the time for my gate. So I'm all done with breakfast. I'm not ashamed to say I absolutely smashed that. I must have been hungrier than I thought. Um, but it was really nice. However, it was £17 for a full English and a coffee, so I can well think it should have been good for that amount of money. <laughs> and now I'm just going to go around a few of these shops, get a sandwich for later on the plane, and then go and check the gate info, maybe find somewhere to pitch up and wait. Very, very excited now. So I've just found a little place out of the way just so I can take my mask down for a second because another question I get asked about loads is makeup. And obviously at the moment you are wearing a face mask a lot. So this morning I've had this face mask on basically since I left the hotel with the couple of exceptions I took it off to eat and stuff. I've had two cups of coffee. I've eaten at that full English breakfast. And as you can see, the lipstick has not moved one tiny bit. Um, it's this one, which is the Maybelline Super Stay Matte Ink Lipstick. It is incredible and it doesn't come off on the mask, nothing. It stays on really, really well. Yeah, so far, so good. It hasn't budged. And the thing I'm actually most excited for at this point is to get to the gate and just be around everybody else who is on this Orlando flight. I know that everyone is gonna be so excited. So I really just wanna kind of be around everyone else who's going and just feel that excitement. I really, really can't wait. It's gonna be amazing. And another thing that some of you will already know, last year in 2020, we did a 24 hour live stream to raise money for Parkinson's UK. And one of the things that I promised I would do um, during the live stream in order to raise the amazing amount of money, we raised 5,000 pounds on that stream, which was so incredible but one of the things i promised i would do is clap and cheer when the plane lands in orlando on my first trip back i have to say ian and becky also promised that they would do it um but given that they are not here they're probably watching this vlog so you too have tapped out and got out of it i am gonna have to now do that by myself <laughs> which I'm not looking forward to. I'm really hoping that the other people in my row are gonna be, you know, a good sport and up for a laugh and might do it with me. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, if you were sat next to me on the plane, I'm really sorry, um, but I'm hoping someone else might do it with me so I don't look like that much of a weirdo, but I'm gonna have to do it because I promised and I have to record it. So that's fun for me. Okay guys, it is happening. Gate 31, let's go. Okay, does anybody watch Love Island? Because all I wanna do right now is go we're going to the gate. We're going to the gate. <laughs> okay, if you don't watch Love Island, you will not have a clue what I'm talking about. But if you do, then that's just what I feel like doing. It's not super obvious where the gates are. It's down this little sneaky bit here by um, EL and N where we were earlier. Hidden around the corner. Another thing I will say when you're traveling, it's easy to overestimate how much time you've got. Um, I got a cab at 7.45 this morning from my airport hotel and it felt like loads of time i got here at eight i had to obviously check in and do all of that but the time goes really really quickly by the time you've like had a coffee eaten something wandered around a couple of shops it's time to go to the gate so always leave yourself loads of time there is nothing worse than rushing at the last minute i should know because that's usually what happens to me but luckily it didn't today i think i just said it's easy to overestimate the time i think i meant underestimate you guys knew what i meant <laughs> Yeah. 
here we go. Okay, so we are now in the departure bit at the gate. There seems to be a little bit of confusion where people were coming through to check in to this bit. They just needed to see a bit more documentation from people. Some people who were being boarded, they needed to see their vaccine pass or their test result, but other people they didn't. So I'm not sure what the difference was, but I came through really quickly and now we just have to wait. Okay, so boarding has begun. I'm just waiting for my row to be called. And I just want to say hi to Martin and Lynn, who I met, they are also on this flight and they're staying at Saratoga Springs. So hi to you guys and thanks for saying hi. If it isn't, push the two ends together until they click. Then tighten it by pulling a strap like this. In the upper class, seats are equipped with an additional shoulder harness that clips to the waist belt like this. I can smell the MCO smell. <laughs> And just like that, we are here, you guys. I can't believe it. I can't believe we are stood here in arrivals at Orlando International. This is what we've been waiting for now for 18 months and it's actually happening. I can't believe it. Okay, the lighting is absolutely terrible in here, but here I am. Uh, we have arrived. I can hardly believe that we are actually here. We're here. It's unbelievable. Um, the flight was really uneventful. It was very, very quick. When we get to the resort, I'll give you a full debrief. I didn't film much of the flight because when you are traveling solo, there's really not a lot to show on the flight. You are basically just kind of sat there watching stuff or listening to music or whatever. Um, but I will obviously talk you through all of that and talk you through the process of arriving here, which, spoiler alert, is basically exactly the same as it used to be. I didn't have to do anything really. Um, but we will talk about that when I get to the hotel. But I just wanted to quickly say, yes, we are here. I'm about to go and get the Magical Express. I will obviously film all of that for you guys. Um, but I just can't believe it. Can't believe it. <laughs> it's happening. I think this point was going to be the bit where it sort of hit me that actually it's happened. There's no dramas. The COVID test was negative. We got on the plane. We made the flight. We got through immigration. You always worry that something weird might happen with all the changes. Um, and everything or there might be some problem but there isn't and we are here i can just hardly hardly believe it and look at this really stunning disney world kind of screen that they have up here um, it's like an animated thing going on and it switches between all of the different parks it's obviously with all the 50th anniversary celebrations very good photo backdrop for when you first arrive so when you arrive at mco if you are getting the magical express which obviously is only for the rest of this year it will be the b side that you want so we're just going to head through here and they do have escalators here but if you've got a lot of luggage they do have lifts just behind so we're going to go for those and you want to go down to the ground floor that's where you get your magical express from I'm not sure about the new Mears service that's taking over for a Magical Express. Not taking over from it, but you know what I mean. Um, replacing it, I guess. I'm not sure whether that will be in the same place or not. That will remain to be seen. 
So into these lifts and down to level one. Make sure you pick level one and not the tunnel. You don't want to go down that far. And once you're out of the elevator, there is then a very long walk all the way down to the bottom of this building. There is a Starbucks. I can't lie, I am very tempted. But I think with this luggage, that's going to be annoying. So I will refrain from doing that. And I also just want to say a big hello to Lily and Jake, who I met while we were getting our baggage. And also to Danielle and Paul, who I met on the monorail over from the gate. So hi to you guys, I hope you all had an amazing trip. I always love meeting you guys, so if anybody does ever see me anywhere at the airport, in the parks, in Target, anywhere that I might be, be sure to always say hi. Because I always like to put faces to names, I see a lot of your comments and stuff, so it's really nice to meet you all. Okay, in a classic Victoria style moment, I was just thinking to myself how dark it looked um, when I was filming, and I thought it was the lighting in this place. It's not, I was on the wrong setting. The camera must have switched the setting when it was in my bag. So um, I'll do what I can when I edit it, but if I look like a dark grainy monster in the last few clips, I do apologise. You know, like really high production value is not what I'm about here, <laughs> so sorry about that. And we are still walking, it really is right down at the end. I can see the signs though for Magical Express. I also really love the sound of my bags on these tiles because it just reminds me of being here every single time. Saying the estimated wait time is 30 minutes, so we'll see how long it actually takes. There's really not that many people here, so hopefully it won't be too long. And there's nobody sort of through here actually waiting for buses. Okay, it did not work on my magic band, but that was fine. I just had to give my hotel reservation and we're off to lane four to Saratoga Springs. Okay, B46. I can't believe this is the last time we are going on Magical Express. And the bus I'm going on is not a Magical Express bus. I wish we were going on this one, but we're going on this white one. And we are on board on the Magical Express. My shiny forehead is uh, showing that it's already a lot warmer here in Orlando than it is back home. Uh, so that's going to be something to get used to. But I'm very, very excited to be here. I can't believe it. We are on our way to the resort. We're on our way to Disney World. I think this evening I'm going to nip across to Disney Springs and get Blaze Pizza for dinner. Um, because I'm staying at Saratoga Springs, that should be nice and easy. And I just can't wait. Obviously, I'm going to Magic Kingdom tomorrow, but just going to Disney Springs this evening is going to be exciting enough. I am very tired. It has been a long day, um, but I do need something to eat. I'm quite hungry. So yes, Blaze Pizza, I think, is the answer to that. So check-in took a long time, like a really, really long time. And because all of my reservations were one night, but for the same room type, it's basically the way I had to book it because we couldn't get any availability. So each night had been booked separately and they had to link them all together so that I could stay in the same room for the whole four nights. Um, but it took a really long time. So I was probably there for like 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something. Um, so now I'm just waiting for bell services to help me to the room. I'm staying in the paddock section, which is not the closest um, to Disney Springs, but it's not too far away. I am feeling super tired, but I do really, really want to go over to Disney Springs. So I hope when I get to the room and just freshen up somewhat, I will feel a bit more awake to um, walk over there. So fingers crossed I won't just get to the room and want to fall asleep. I hope, because I do really want a Blaze Pizza. Also, another thing I love about staying here is when you first arrive, they take you on like a mad golf cart ride to your room. And it, for me, it feels a little bit like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. So I do love that. <laughs> We have arrived at our studio in the paddock section of Saratoga Springs. I thought I would just really quickly show you around. These have recently been refurbished and they look really, really good. So as you come in, you have a closet over here and then you have your mirror, sink and some storage and extra towels and stuff down there. Then in here is the bathroom. Where is the light? There we go. 
and this is a big improvement because I did feel like the bathroom was quite dated before it had a shower curtain and just wasn't yeah just wasn't very modern but now it has a shower screen and that is what the shower looks like and there is of course a tub as well and a toilet in here also then going out here you have your little kitchen kind of area so there is a fridge down there sorry my suitcases are really in the way in here is normally just trash and stuff nope just a fire extinguisher apparently hope we won't be needing that then up here you just have your coffee and stuff it looks like we've got the oh the 50th anniversary blend joffrey's yes i will be having some of that in the morning and microwave and up here is just usually cups and cutlery and stuff. Oh, and the actually these cups are good for making coffee to take with you in the morning, so that's handy. Then coming into the main part of the room, you have this little bench thing, which I think looks like storage as well. Yeah, so there's storage in there too. And then there is a mirror up here. Then you have your TV and a big unit with lots of drawers, so loads of space to put stuff. And then your door's going out to the, well, I was going to say balcony. This is actually ground floor, so patio, I guess. Then you have a table and the couch. And the bed is now actually one of these pull-down beds. So it isn't the pull-out kind of couch bed thing that they used to have, which I have to say were not the most comfortable things in the world. Now you actually pull this down. Um, I'm not going to fully pull it down, but you can see there, that's super cute. <laughs> it's got the Saratoga Springs stables artwork there. And yeah, that is the bed basically. So if you have more than two people in the room and you need both beds, that is your second bed. But it's quite nice because if you don't need it, then you have all of this space and it's not taken up by a second bed. So that's one of the really good things about the DVC units. And here is the main bed in the room and some nice equestrian themed artwork. So yeah, that is a refurbished Saratoga Springs studio. So let's just take a look. How do we get, how do we get out of here? So let's just take a look at our surroundings and how do we get out? Turn lever, here we go. So like I said, we are on the ground floor. So we've just got this little kind of patio area with some chairs and actually because we are on the end of the building there's kind of nobody else right here obviously we've got neighbors to that side <laughs> but we don't have neighbors to this side i don't normally sit out here an awful lot to be honest because i'm just normally here there and everywhere and then you can see the other kind of buildings around but this is such a big spread out resort it does feel very very peaceful and quiet I and mean, it always feels quiet here and we are here we're in the room we're at Disney, the whole travel process went smoothly and we have actually arrived. Um, I'm kind of in that phase at the moment where it feels surreal. I feel like, do you know what it feels like? It feels like I'm watching somebody's vlog or something about Saratoga Springs and this and that and I just feel like I'm having some kind of out of body experience where I am not actually experiencing this. That's the only way I can describe it. And this often happens to me at the best of times on a travel day because you've done such a long day, like it is so tiring and you kind of feel a bit delirious by the time you get here. So I have had that similar kind of feeling before, but I think it's even more so because of how long it's been um, waiting for this trip and how highly anticipated this has been. So I really feel just a little bit not with it right now. Um, as I was saying, I feel extremely tired. I also feel very like bedraggled when you've had nine hours on a plane, plus the whole airport experience at either end, just that very long day, I'm feeling like, like I need a shower and I need to just get myself sorted and part of me really just wants to lay down on that bed and not move until the morning but the sensible part of me is like no you need to go to Disney Springs I wanted to go to the guest services there to sort out my annual pass so that when I get to Magic Kingdom in the morning I can just go right in and I don't have to deal with that and I do really need to eat something I was half tempted to just get Uber Eats delivered and I was like no by the time I do that I could just go over there that's one of the great things about being here so close to Disney Springs so I'm going to force myself out I haven't unpacked anything I've literally just obviously shown you guys around run a brush through my hair um, which has not done much to improve things 
since it's not looking great. I'm not gonna be tempted to go to Sephora tonight. I've got plenty of time for that. As much as I'm gonna want to start looking around things at Disney Springs, I need to get back here and get some sleep and also just do a debrief for you guys on everything since the plane. Because since the plane, I've just kind of been excited to be here and I did show you the Magical Express, but I just wanna talk about the flights and what happened when I landed, going through immigration and all that sort of thing while it's fresh in my mind. So I feel like this will have been a longer travel day vlog wise. I know my travel days usually can be quite brief from kind of being at the airport in the UK to getting to Orlando. I just kind of show the highlights, but I feel like today I have filmed a lot more talking about everything so I hope it's been helpful for you guys and useful for your trips coming up um, but yes I think I'm going to go to Disney Springs now let's just do it let's just go um, the guy from Bell Services said the best way I'm right by the bus stop here at the paddock and he said if you just go to the next stop on the bus which is Congress Park then you're right there to walk across he said you can walk the whole thing obviously but it's actually quite quick because you can get on any bus and it will take you along to Congress Park because that's just the next stop over. So I think we'll do that. I'll be glad in the morning if I don't have to go to guest services when I get to the Magic Kingdom. Okay, I think I messed up already and did not find the bus stop. I'm just gonna walk. It's easier. At least I know which way to go for that. <laughs> Temperature is just amazing as well. It's like, a nice summer evening in the UK, this kind of temperature. This is probably cold for people who live here in Florida, um, but for me, this is actually warm. You can feel the humidity. Um, back home in the UK at the moment, it is freezing at night time, so this is really, really nice. Okay, so coming up over here, I think we can see one of the Grand Villas, which are the huge, huge units that they have here. Um, I think that one's obviously occupied because the TV is on. Not that I'm into staring through people's windows, obviously, um, but I just wanted to show you. You can see how huge that window is. Oh, now there's someone stood at the window. Awkward. Might need to abort the vlog. No, we're good. We're good. They've moved. So yeah, you can kind of see how massive that is. Awkwardly filming through people's windows. Let's not do that too much, but I just wanted you to get an idea of how big the Grand Villas are because they are huge. And I think we're almost there at Disney Springs. Like if that's the case, it was such a short walk. I don't think it would ever be worth getting the bus unless I've completely misjudged where I am. Yes, yeah, so I think this is Congress Park over here, which is where I was gonna get the bus to. So yeah, it was a really easy walk. Obviously we've got a little bit further to go to actually get to Disney Springs. Okay, so we're on the right track. You kind of go between the buildings here at Congress Park and you're right at Disney Springs. The conclusion is that if your legs are not tired, which mine are not because I've been sat on a plane all day, the walk is easy from the paddock. If you were absolutely exhausted and you've been in the park all day, then you might want to get a bus if your feet are sore or something. Um, but it's really not necessary. You could totally walk it. And there it is, looking amazing. Disney Springs, we have missed you. Oh my goodness, I can't wait, I can't believe I'm here. I'm having another reality moment, everyone. <laughs> Seeing Disney Springs for the first time. Oh my goodness. Just wait until the morning when we're going to Magic Kingdom. I think what I'm actually gonna do, well, I've just been thinking, these are the thoughts I have to myself while I'm walking along. If I get a bus back to Saratoga Springs, then I'll know exactly where the bus stop is for the morning. So that makes sense. We'll walk to it and get the bus back. And I did speak to the cast member at check-in and she confirmed that mask wearing is yes indoors. So in stores, inside, anywhere, then yes, wear your mask. Definitely on transportation, but when you're walking around outside like this, you don't have to. Obviously if I was in the parks, even if I was outside and it was super crowded, I would wear mine anyway, but you don't have to when you're outside. And we made it, that walk was not bad at all. So Friday night at Disney Springs, brace yourselves for the crowds. There are a lot of people here. I mean, this is normal for Fridays and Saturdays at Disney Springs, but if you are slightly freaked out by crowds at the moment, just be prepared because there are a lot of people so definitely I am wearing my mask right now. Most people are not, to be fair, it is outside. Um, but for me, when there's this many people around, I definitely would want to wear it. And there's some live music going on, which is very loud. For some reason, I am really struggling to find a guest services. I don't know if I've just forgotten where it is. I was sure it was back here. So I'm hoping I haven't got that wrong. Okay, I think this is it just around here. I hope they're open. Okay, I'm sure it was around here somewhere. Have I dreamed a guest services location that doesn't exist? This is Frontera Cucina. I think that's how you say it. 
then Deluxe Burger should be around here. Ah, yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, there's Deluxe Burger and I think this building is it. So there is a bit of a wait at the guest services centre, so I put my name down that I need to speak to somebody and she said it might be like 40 minutes, so I'm just gonna go and eat a Blaze pizza real quick, which shouldn't take me that long, and then I can come back there and wait and hopefully speak to somebody. She did say I could do it in the park in the morning, but I'm just worried that I would wish I didn't do that. If it's busy or, you know, it would just be a pain. So yeah, I think I'm gonna try and do it here. in here tonight as is much of Disney Springs I think at the moment but I have my pizza it smells so good I love 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 Lay's pizza this is my first thing I'm eating this trip I'm absolutely buzzing for this I'm so hungry and um, I had a cheese sandwich on the plane like I don't know so many hours ago so I cannot wait to get into this I just have veggies on it um, just like peppers spinach mushrooms nothing too exciting but I love it 20 minutes later okay that was so good I really needed that and I always think to myself do I misremember how good Blaze Pizza is because I always remember it being so amazing is it really that good yes it is that was really really good love it it's always a really good first night thing to eat it's really cheap as well compared to a lot of places just so good but it is very busy in there so brace yourselves for that and now i'm headed back round to guest services and hopefully i can get these issues sorted out and get my annual pass picked up and then i can head back to saratoga springs have a little debrief and then go to bed because i am so tired okay we are out from visiting guest services it took a really 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 long time to see someone just because they were very busy but it was totally worth it i got my ticket sorted out my annual pass i had another issue that got sorted out um, which was to do with expired tickets and all kinds of stuff but we're all done but i am also now done i was almost falling asleep in the chair in there because i was so tired so we're just heading for the buses and then we will be going to bed ready for magic kingdom tomorrow how beautiful is this christmas tree and saratoga springs is bus stop three which i'm very glad about because that means we don't have to walk very far sometimes you have to go all the way right the way around but we're just going here so that's a lot easier okay so i've just got off the bus at the paddock and now i see exactly where the stop is and where i should have gone earlier basically when i came down through here earlier i turned right instead of left so that's fine i know exactly where i'm going now for the morning and we'd be nice and quiet because I'd imagine most people are in bed because it is now midnight. And for me and my body clock, that's now 5 a.m. UK time, so that is not good for me. Hey everyone, so I am back now from Disney Springs in my pajamas um well pajamas this is my Epcot forever t-shirt but i do quite often wear this to bed and i haven't redone my makeup or anything since 7 a.m when i was at the hotel at heathrow so i feel like i look pretty bedraggled right now having said that some of this lipstick is still on so that maybelline lipstick i was talking about earlier definitely stays on i've had a mask on like virtually all day uh, but i am feeling pretty tired i can't lie and looking it as well so i'm about to go to sleep but i just wanted to talk you guys through um just quickly what happened when i landed and just a little bit about the flight so like i said earlier when you're on your own and you're flying you really don't have a lot to say or show during the flight like sometimes if i was with becky or kate we might play uno or we might do something like something that is worth showing but when you're traveling solo you kind of are just sat on the plane watching stuff or whatever so there really wasn't anything going on it was a really full flight so i think i saw one or two seats empty but almost the whole thing was completely full it was very very busy and the flight itself in terms of mask wearing and stuff because a few people did ask about that they are very strict on you wearing a face covering you do have to wear it for the whole flight unless you're eating or drinking and they did make announcements several times during the flight to say that that does not mean you can sit there with a drink with your mask off for like an hour sipping this drink every now and again like you have to actually be drinking it 
or you need to put your mask back on because they were obviously getting wise to that because I think that was happening um, some of the time. These announcements kept coming out as if they were kind of telling somebody off who was doing that. So um, they did keep mentioning it. They did keep making announcements. They were like, please can we remind you, you do need to wear it all the time. For the most part, people were. Um, everyone around me was wearing their mask and, and people were pretty good. So that's just to give you a bit of info on that. They are definitely strict on the flights with saying that you need to put your mask on and the cabin crew will come over and tell you to put it back on if you seem to have kind of taken it off or put it down um, below your nose or whatever for no reason they will come and ask you to put it back on properly in terms of food and drink on the flight that was largely the same they came through with drinks quite often as they always do food that they bring you is no longer kind of on a tray out in the open it's in like a box it's pretty much the same thing there's like a meal in there and cheese and crackers I think and some kind of dessert but it's just in a box that they hand you and then later in the flight they give you this afternoon tea um, in this little box which was basically a cream tea and there was also a sandwich I think in there and the cream tea did kind of make me laugh now I love a cream tea I am from the southwest of course I do but I did think it was kind of an odd choice of thing to give people on a plane because actually when they served it we started getting really bad turbulence and I looked around at one point and just seeing everybody trying to like construct this cream tea with this tiny little plastic knife and of course you've then got to get the cream on and the jam that's in this like little sachet and people were really struggling to like put this cream tea together and it's really crumbly so there were like crumbs everywhere and then turbulence was happening when people were trying to eat it so people had like cream up their nose and there's like bits of scone flying everywhere and it just really made me laugh I was like whose idea was that to, <laughs> to give people that on a flight because it is quite messy so yeah I did find that quite funny but mostly everything on the flight was the same it's just you've got to wear your mask and obviously I was using hand sanitizer and stuff a lot as well and um, it went really quickly very very uneventful then when we got to Orlando of course you're not allowed to film anything going through immigration and security there was no one in the immigration hall so there was no line I just walked straight up pretty much and I did not have to show them any of the stuff that I thought I was going to have to so when you board in the UK obviously that's when we had to show our vaccine pass and the negative test result and all that kind of stuff when we landed at MCO all I had to show them was my passport they asked the usual questions how long are you in the country what's the purpose of your visit um, how much money have you got in cash or something like that you know the usual stuff but they didn't want to see the vaccine thing they didn't want to see the negative test result they didn't ask for anything covid related here in Orlando that was all done back in the UK so I'd kind of expected that the process when we got to Orlando would take longer because everyone would have to show all of this additional stuff you don't have to show any of it I breezed through in record time grabbed my bag and then off I went it was just so quick and easy it was one of the quickest kind of processes processes that I've had getting through at the airport so that was really easy and then that kind of catches you up to when I got onto the Magical Express so I feel like I have vlogged quite a lot today compared to usual like I was saying there's just been a lot more to say I know a lot of you have been wondering about the process wondering what it's going to be like it honestly was so much easier than I had anticipated like I said earlier I didn't print out anything on paper literally all I had was my passport and then on my phone I had my vaccine proof through the NHS app I had my fit to fly certificate which was sent to me by the company who did my PCR test and I've got a copy of my ESTA on my phone as well um, so that was it I didn't need any anything else it was just super super easy it felt exactly the same as every other travel day that I've done to be honest with the one difference that you have to wear a mask at both airports Heathrow and at MCO and on the Magical Express and the whole time on the flight basically you are wearing a mask pretty much the entire time that is really the only difference I noticed everything else took the same amount of time it wasn't a big hassle nothing it was just like every other travel day like I said earlier there was no social distancing anywhere in queues or anything like that you know people were just moving around as they normally would do people do seem to stick to wearing their masks when they're traveling which is good from what I saw anyway um the one thing I did want to mention about Disney though so since I've been here I've only been over to Disney Springs so far but I did notice everywhere that I went so I went into Blaze Pizza I went into the 
um, guest services place and obviously as I was walking around I could see other stuff going on they do ask you to put your face covering on before you go in anywhere they will pick you up on it if you're not wearing it I heard cast members telling people to pull it up over their nose because people had it like down here and they were actually going over and saying can you put that on properly I saw people not being able to go into places because they didn't have a mask so one thing that I'm not sure on, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, because I don't know this for 100%, it's just an impression I get. But in the UK, obviously, if people are exempt from wearing a mask, you don't have to. It feels like that's not a thing here. I think the expectation is that everybody has to wear one. I might be wrong, but that is just an impression I get that a lot of places were like, if you haven't got your mask, you're not coming in. When I was going into Blaze Pizza, I was in a line outside and one of the team members came out and they were like, if you're coming in, you need to have your mask on, please put your mask on. So they are very, very strict on it. And it just felt like the expectation is that everybody has to put one on regardless of anything so like I said in the UK where you're like exempt from wearing a mask I don't know if that's the case here so just maybe look into that if you are someone who's exempt in the UK from wearing a mask because I don't know that that is the same over here and I think they do expect you to wear one everywhere anyway I am going to go now because I am honestly <laughs> so tired I'm looking in the viewfinder here and I'm like oh my word I look so tired as well um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this travel day if you did give it a thumbs up I've got lots coming up with more vlogs from this trip I also have another trip coming up in January so excited for everything that's coming up I'm going to be doing live streams while I'm here I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for always being so supportive the amount of messages I had today on my social medias especially over on Instagram where everyone was so excited for the travel day today I had so many lovely messages it was just really really nice I literally had hundreds and hundreds of messages so thank you guys so much I cannot wait to share the rest of this trip with you I'm so so beyond excited for tomorrow i feel like tomorrow will be when it really hits me that i am back here like i said today has felt kind of like i'm having some sort of outer body experience it is weird it feels like i'm not here i'm like watching someone else here or something it's very strange i think i'm just very tired at this point so hopefully tomorrow i will feel refreshed and completely normal because i got back so late from disney springs i was thinking oh my gosh like i need to lay my stuff out for tomorrow and i need to be up and i need to be ready and i have to get out in the morning and be there for park opening i really don't have to be there for park opening i don't have any reservations like dining reservations or anything i will obviously look into doing genie plus and stuff but tomorrow specifically I don't need to be there that early and because I am so tired tonight I obviously will just go with the flow and see what happens that's one of the good things about traveling on your own is you can just do that so I will see what happens I suspect I'll be awake early because of jet lag anyway but I will see you guys in the morning for our first day in the Magic Kingdom I really really can't wait so as I said thank you guys so much for watching I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one We are about to walk in to the Magic Kingdom. I cannot believe this. Oh my god.